Hey everybody, welcome back to a, what's a chilly morning in Arizona. And by chilly, I'm talking about 65 degrees and sunny, and that's chilly to us anymore. Um, if you saw my wife, she looks like she's bundled up like an Eskimo. You'd you think you'd look out the window and you'd see snow and ice, but it's not. It's 65 and sunny. Did go down into the 50s last night, and but that is that is chilly to us, but I got shirt sleeves on and it's actually kind of nice out in the garage and I'm going to start to get a lot of work done now in the areas that um that are normally not air conditioned so when it's 115 out it's like really difficult to work for more than 15 20 minutes in one of those areas even with fans so anyway one of the things I've been needing lately has been a small chop saw I am um, I had a 16 inch chop saw that I've recently given away. I've given a bunch of my older industrial sized equipment away. I, a, I have no room to use it here and I really have no need for it. So there's a young guy down the street from me who's doing handyman work and he's on a shoestring, single father. So I've been giving him a bunch of my older stuff. I'm happy to get rid of it and get the space back and he's certainly happy to have it. So I need to cut some small parts up. Now if I was doing just one or two or three, I'd probably just use a Dremel tool and a vise, but I have a lot that I want to cut and this is something I've had a need for for a while, a very small cutoff saw. So this is the $39.95 and unfortunately Harbor Freight doesn't offer 20% off coupons anymore, so this is normally $39.95. It has a 2 inch bladed cutoff wheel. So the, the, the biggest thing it can cut through in one go is half an inch. Now they have a six inch cutoff saw that can, I think, I forget what it's cut off. I think it can do an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, something like that. But it has an abrasive wheel on it. And I don't really think I want an abrasive wheel for this. Besides, I want the smallest thing I can get. So I got this. I thought I'd give it a go. I got, it's the, that bladed wheel, it says, make perfect cuts in soft metals, wood, and plastic. So that's what it's for. I'm not going to be testing it on steel today. Let's get it out and have a look at it. Now, one thing to note, when I buy something like this in Harbor Freight, it comes out of the box and gets checked out and plugged in and tested before I leave the store. So that's why you're going to see it's not in the plastic bag because I have bought stuff from Harbor Freight that were missing parts and the motors didn't even run or you, within 10 seconds smoke was pouring out of them especially this really inexpensive drill master stuff so let's take a look at it so that's why it's open it has not been used yet other than having it turned on and make sure it runs without burning up in 10 seconds I have not really had it running it comes, plastic bag it was in, I threw away, comes with a little clamp, which honestly, I'm not sure of how much value that's really going to be, but there it is, it can clamp to the end of a workbench, and um, as you can see, it has that little bladed wheel, and it has, it comes built in with a little, a little vise, I have not used this one yet, and you can rotate that to, um, to a 45 degree angle so you can get 45 degree cuts. So let's plug it in, let's turn it on. I say I already know that it works. And here's something else I picked up a while back to replace something large and that's this little miniature three inch grinder. Comes with a flex shaft too. I found that to be very useful. These, these little things don't have a huge amount of power so they're usually not that valuable for steel but um, they're certainly good for aluminum, brass, plastic, things like that. So let's unplug that. And let's see what it sounds like first. So that's what it sounds like. It's kind of a noisy little thing. So I've got some things here I want to test. Here is a small piece of aluminum tubing. Let's, um, let's cut that off and let's see how it works on that. And the vise, the vise on it, believe it or not, I wasn't expecting it, but the vise also, can you see that, has a little V in it. So it will hold on to round objects halfway decently. I was actually surprised when I saw that. Somebody had to put a little bit of thought into that. And can we see that there? Not really very well, can we? Let me reposition the camera. Hang on. 
Okay, there we go. I hope that's a little bit better. Let's um, let's see what we can do here on that piece of thin aluminum tubing. Say, I have not used this before, so we're gonna find out. <laughs> One other thing to note that it does have a safety here. You can't just move that down. You see that little orange rod sticking down. You have to push this button on top to move that back into a hole. I'm sure I'll probably either break that or remove it because it annoyed me. But anyway, here's our cut. It cut through that aluminum tube without a problem. I've got some other things to try. Here is a chunk of, what is this? This is that epoxy, epoxy resin. Um, I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, pen makers use it. You know, the guys who make the custom ballpoint pens use it. I bought a bag of it a while ago to play with, made a few things for my wife, and then kind of forgot it even existed. It might be a little bit bigger than half inch, but let's cut a piece off it and see. Vice holds it nice. Here we go. It's already annoying me. So yeah, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make that through in one cut because it is bigger than um it is bigger than half inch. So I'm gonna have to take a second slice out of that. Let's go right there and let's try again. Yeah, I hate that thing already. There we go. So that gave us a really nice cut in plastic. Here is a thicker piece of aluminum. Let's put it to a test. And yeah, I have something 3D printed. I am going to do some something that's been 3D printed. But let's um let's put it to this test. All right, that may be a bit much for it. It would get through it eventually, but that is a bit much for it. Um, they have us that six inch. If you're cutting something like this regularly, that six inch saw with the abrasive blade, which is only ten dollars more than this one, may be the better choice. So, 3D printed plastic. What do I got here? I had something here. Um, oh, here we go. Let's cut this up. Here's one of my three wise skull test prints in black. I don't even like it in the black. Let's um. Let's see if we can get it in there and cut it. It's not like I doubt that it's going to cut plastic, but um, let's cut Mr. Top Skull off. Can I squeeze that in? I can't get... doesn't look like the vise is going to hold that, so I'm going to have to hold it by hand. So here we go. Probably have to take two cuts at it. That's not working for some reason. How come? There we go. Oh, it's, it's hitting the base. I'm going to have to come in like this. All right. There we go. Okay, well that is a little bit too thick for it, without a doubt. But um, it does cut through it, but that, that's just a little bit too big for this. Again, if you're cutting anything much anything bigger than, I would say, you know, 10, 12 millimeters, you probably want the bigger saw. But I didn't want the bigger saw. I wanted this very small size. The bigger saw is two, two and a half times the size of this one. Plus, it's really long this way, and I just didn't want that. I wanted something very small that takes up very little space. So now what I bought this for are to cut these. If you're unfamiliar with what these are, that's fine. You don't really need to be. 
This is a brass cartridge case. I won't go into any further lengths than that because we all know Google hates freedom. So anyway, there is a jig on Thingiverse to trim these and I have put it, cut it, printed one, and let's give it a shot. If I remember right, it goes in like that, and let's see how it works with brass. I think I need to come this way just a bit. Something in the way of my feet there. So we're not down all the way. Why aren't we down all the way? Oh, I see. It's got a, it's got a thing in there. That's not a problem. Our print really needs something in there for that, doesn't it? It really does. I may have to, um, I may have to redesign that. But for now, let's give it a go and just see how it cuts this. Yeah, that's hard to get level like that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That sucks. I wonder why they designed it like that. Oh, I see why they designed it like that. Okay, that's not a problem. I don't know if you can see it from there, but um, let me show it to you. There is a, there is a little hump raised portion on the inside of the vise. And that's so if your piece overhangs this swivel area here for the miter gauge, it doesn't want to tip. So that's why that's like that. So we just need to make sure our, our little jig here goes all the way over onto that so that it sits flush. And then we'll tighten it down and we'll try this. For those of you who know what I'm doing, great. For those of you who don't, you don't need to. That's fine. I just want to get this in about the right position. All right, let's give this a try. Here we go. Brass cartridge case. I'm going to hold that with my finger, I think. piece of that's the piece of tube I guess our piece went off the back of the bench that figures um, but it made a nice cut there let's do another one you can see you can see where the cut went what I'm trying to do is just cut off that um, that bottleneck so let's do another one and the way the guy designed this the cut piece should go out toward the back, and it did. It went all the way off the back of the bench, for that matter. Let's put the box back there. Maybe we can catch it. Let's try another one. Am I still in the shot? I am still in the shot. And then he designed it so that if you push the one you cut forward, there's a little ledge on there and it rolls it off out the front. So, did we catch our piece? Nope, that went for a... Alright, I don't know where those are going to. They're going somewhere. I'll have to find some better way to catch those if I want them. But for right now, I don't really care. I'm going to be doing at least several hundred of these. You can see it made a pretty nice cut. So, if you need a little chop saw for your, for your maker space, and I bought this with my own money, this was not a sponsored video in any way, I'll put a link to it below at Harbor Freight. If you're um, in Canada, what well, I think Canada Tire or someplace like that sells these up in Canada. If you're in the rest of the world, it's just a made in Chinese inexpensive little tool. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. It is the Drill Master. 120 volt 2 inch bench top cutoff saw and for those of you in America the Harbor Freight item is 62136 and I will put a link to it below. It won't be an affiliate link but if there's other links down there they, they probably will be. Anyway, hope you guys are having a great week and I will catch you the next time. Stay warm. It's freezing here.
<laughs> Bye for now.